We are going to thank you all again for coming and enjoying your speech with us. It was it's been an interesting year for celebrating Bernie Sanders music. And we hope hearing about the stories about the music, the people behind it, has increased your enjoyment of listening to it. What we would appreciate you doing, and now these are free concerts, but our costs are rising, the music is costing more, programs are costing more, etc. So if you by any chance can help us out, there's a basket in the back. We would appreciate any donation you could afford to give us. This is, as I said, costs are rising, and we do want to keep these programs coming out. So without uh, any further work, let's go into West Side Story. The fact that West Side Story it took eight years to come to fruition is a testament of the well-being in state of its four collaborators. They knew what worked and what didn't, and they recognized a good idea that needed the right moment, the right story to come together. And in the process, it accelerated the rising, the rising star of yet another talented young composer and lyricist. The collaborators were Jerome Robbins, who was a world renowned choreographer and director of theater, movies, and television, as well as ballet. He conceived directly and choreographed the program production of West Side Story. Arthur Morris was considered by many to be the greatest of brightest in American theater. He wrote the West Side Story book. Stephen Hassan Hyam Jr. is our second young rising star. At the time he was 25 years old, experienced the relatively unknown composer and lyricist who had been mentioned, who had been mentored rather by Oscar Hammerstein II. Arthur Lawrence was familiar with Sondheim's work and introduced him to Bernstein and Robbins. As soon as Sondheim auditioned for them, in November 1955, the group knew they had their lyricist. And of course, Leonard Bernstein. He wrote the music, which was a synthesis of Broadway, jazz, and Latin rhythms. In 1947, Jerome Robbins talked to Bernstein and Arthur Lorenz about collaborating on a contemporary musical adaptation of Romeo and Juliet. It would involve an Irish Catholic family and a Jewish family, both living in the lower east side of Manhattan. The story would take place during the Easter Passover season, and the girl in the story would be a Holocaust survivor. Anti-Semitism would be the cause of the conflict between the Catholic Jets and the Jewish Emeralds. After the three great towns wrote the first draft of East Side Story, they took one hard look at it, realized it didn't work, and went their separate ways until 1955. Peggy Bernstein and Lorenz just happened to be in Hollywood at the same time. Over coffee, they talked, and their talk conversation turned to the headlines that dominated the front pages of Los Angeles' papers. Street games were a recent social phenomenon, and in the heat of the Chicano turf war, certain streets had just become simply backgrounds. The newspaper stories just started their imagination, and Bernstein came up with the idea of rewriting the East Side Story and setting it in Los Angeles. Arthur Lorenz, however, was more familiar with Harlem and the poor victims that lived there than he was the Mexicans in the Oliver Street neighborhood of Los Angeles. When the two friends told Jerome Robbins what they had in mind, he loved the idea of a musical with a Latin beat. So East Side became West Side, and Lorenz and Robbins started developing a musical. Although Bernstein had returned to New York, the three men stayed in touch. Together, they wrote, rewrote, massaged, tweaked the story, music, and choreography. Eventually, the casting call went out for young adult men and women in their late teens or early twenties. One, one of Bernstein's most difficult decisions was to not use trained singers. He felt that anything that sounded professional or experienced would destroy the kid quality that he was looking for and that his characters had to have to be believable on the stage. Although hundreds of young hopefuls auditioned for the original production, 
It proved to be extremely challenging. But eventually, 40 Lincoln Helpfuls were hired. For many of them, this was their Broadway debut. But they had that kid quality that Bernstein wanted, and it just went right across the footlights and the lines. West Side Story opened in New York on September 26, 1957. It ran through 732 performances. The London run was even longer. But that year, the Tony for Best Musical went to Meredith Wilson's Music Man. However, when the film version came out, the Academy Award for Best Picture in 1961 went to West Side Story. And altogether, it garnered 10 out of 11 Academy Awards. Stephen, for Stephen Sondheim, West Side Story was the golden opportunity the talented young lyricist and composer needed. So his, his subsequent writing continued. He focused on theaters, musical reviews, television, motion pictures, and again, the list of honors this, this long. It was definitely a success story that still has no end. So again, we thank you so very much for coming. We hope you enjoyed it. And without further ado, it is our great pleasure to present the musical highlights from West Side Story. <laughs> 